after the generic terrain that I made for the last video, I was itching to make something more specific. A cottage for my witch, the general, the spiritual leader of my Warriors of Chaos army. Now while that seems awfully specific, I made sure it was usable for several types of games. For example, Mordheim, Dungeons and Dragons. Let's take a look at the finished result. One of the main reasons why I have this channel is to become better at my craft. I'm going to start listening to the professionals. Rule number one, don't create art from imagination. I was confused about that one. Isn't imagination what drives this whole art endeavor? The imagination part in this case comes from the witch living in the cottage in the forest. I know I ain't gonna win prizes for imagination, but what it all comes down to is use reference. So I did. I found this picture on Pinterest. Would love to credit the artist, but I couldn't find any information. I love the atmosphere of this piece. The slanted roof, the window sticking out to the side. Yep, I'm inspired. In the past I would use this drawing as an inspiration to make some drawings of myself and try to get some measurements from the drawing. However, this time I made a mock-up model out of simple paper. This is very easy, it's cheap, easy to cut, and it's very easy to readjust. For example, I thought the building was a little bit high. Very simple to draw in and cut in doors and what have you. In short, very easy to experiment with. Throw in a couple of miniatures to see how the scale works. I'm very happy with this result. So let's start with the construction of the cottage. I took the measurements of the paper house and then it was time to Cut all the walls. With the basic walls cut, I'm going to start making a chimney. The wall section with the chimney is staying loose at all times until after painting to make it a little bit easier to paint. This is a one centimeter thick piece of foam board without the cardboard, so just the foam. Lay down a pattern of five millimeter stripes and then with a ball pen I simply draw in a pattern of stones measuring about a centimeter wide. This is going to be an old cottage. It is the home of a witch after all, so nothing too clean, nothing too fancy. I'm going to try and add some destruction, some wear and tear on the rocks, on the stones. After drawing, I cut in with a sharp pointed knife and then go back again with the pen to widen the lines and to rough it up. The stones are pushed into the foam to give some more texture, some more variables in the pattern. And some are completely cut out and re-glued in a different position. With the stones all cut and weathered up, I'm going to apply some PVA glue and I'm going to glue these to the back wall. To make the chimney appear more rough, some stones are added individually, especially at the top because I want to simulate the chimney going into the house. So this is the first piece of the chimney, the outside section. I also cut a bunch of sections to simulate the stone at the side of the building. Same principle, same techniques as before. And this is the result. Time to assemble the house and glue these pieces on. Lego to the rescue once again. If you want to make 90 degree angles when gluing stuff together, just make yourself a jig like I did. And then it's just that easy. Just push in the pieces to the sides of the Lego. 
do everything nicely together nice 90 degree angle and you're done remember ladies and gentlemen this is the only use for lego don't go and cut paint or glue this stuff together go and steal the other toys of your children though ones without resale value one of the more fun parts of any build texturing and detailing first is a texture for the interior of the house we're going to use toilet paper a layer of pva glue push in the toilet paper and repeat this step for all the walls I highly recommend using unused toilet paper, however if you are in need of some extra texture you know what to do. After drying time we add another layer of PVA glue, thin down with a bit of water. This is going to wet the entire surface and then we can easily remove the paper from the door and the windows. Last step in the indoor texturing process is a, again a little bit of thin down PVA glue at the sides and where there is maybe some more need for a bit of PVA glue. This is just a step to make everything neat and tidy as you can see here. Time for some more detailing, wooden details at the side of the building and the interior. For this I used the balsa strips and styrene strips all weathered up with a steel brush. These were simply cut to size and glued on at the appropriate places. The inside of the door and the windows is simple cardboard. At this point it's time to make the fancy side window. I reach back to the original paper house that I made for a template cut it out from five millimeter foam board and I attach it with toothpicks and a little bit of PVA to make sure that it's sturdy we are going to use the same materials for the outside texture namely toilet paper and watered down PVA glue However, we are going to work slightly different in this case. Instead of applying a nice piece of toilet paper in one go and trying to keep it as clean as possible, this process is a little bit more messy. We are going to simply rip strips and glue these on with loads more PVA glue. The PVA glue, the water and the paper is, is going to make some kind of paper mache type of texture. So we really do not want the texture that is inherent in the toilet paper. But we are going to melt, if you will, the toilet paper with the water, so we get this clay stucco type texture. This is a really simple and cheap technique to get some really awesome results as you will see in the finished product. This is it for now, repeat this step for all the other walls. The base for this I'm going to use 5mm EPVC or extruded polystyrene. This does not warp which is the main attraction for this material. It's also fairly easy to cut and shape which is the first thing I do. Cut into shape, give everything a good nice sanding so I get a nice beveled edge. Time to glue the house or at least three walls of the little cottage to the base. For this I use hot glue and I press it firmly to the base. With the last detailing done, it's time to start working on the roof. I used the template from the little paper house I made, took some measurements and cut a new roof out of cardboard. This is held together with painter's tape and even though it's quite flimsy, after adding a bunch of materials and glue and paint, it's going to hold up just fine. I made it easy on myself for the side window. The roof is going to be filled with thatch, so I just cut out some pieces of cardboard 
and used hot glue to attach everything together. Pretty messy, but it, it gets the job done. The chimney is a piece of textured foam with a thumbtack pushed in. And then for detaching, I used a cocoa bristled broom. Simply cut off the pieces at length that you need. And then I use a bit of hot glue. Squirt a little drop at the end. Wait a couple of seconds and then I use my fingers to press everything nicely together. A more elegant way and one that minimizes risk of burning is to use a little piece of parchment paper and make your little pieces of thatching this way. I then attach these little tufts of cocoa fiber to the house with a bit of hot glue. There were still some lines drawn on the roof from making the basic design. These are easy to follow to make everything nice and straight. Everything is cut to size with scissors to make the roof clean and pretty. A bit more detailing to the roof, strips of balsa weathered up and glued on with a bit of hot glue. Time for a good PVA bath. I want to make a hard shell for when we are going to lay down the paints and I want to check a bit of the unruly hairs from the thatching. This is simply a matter of just painting on the PVA glue all over the roof. I'm gonna lay down some simple sand on the soil. First layer of thin down PVA. Very simple. All around the house. While the PVA glue dries, I'm going to make a door and a couple of windows. Super glue, blister packaging and strips of balsa wood. First I made a template from the window. Cut it out out of the blister packing. And then with little strips of balsa wood attached with super glue, I made this wooden frame. The large window was basically made in the exactly the same way. The round section at top is a MDF wheel cut up into half and simply glued on. The door of perception is a piece of 2 mm thick EPVC. It's not only cool to make bases from, it's also nice to make textured items. Strips of cardboard and little pieces of one millimeter styrene rod for the detailing. Every door needs a handle. For this I'm going to use a very thin floral wire twisted around a screwdriver, cut up into shape and then simply glued on the door. The little square is a piece of balsa wood which I'm going to drown in super glue to make it a bit stronger. I use a small strip of paper to get rid of the excess glue, work fast so you don't get any fibers behind. This is the last piece of detailing, it's time to do some black primer and a grey zenithal highlighter of primer. This brings out all the lovely texture which is going to help me with the painting. I'm going to start off with the walls. Random tan, old white and US light grey, three Vallejo colors and I'm going to stipple these on to the walls. I start with the random tan and I cover about 70% of the entire surface. Old white on the other 20% making sure it overlaps here and there with the random tan and then finally the US grey. Allow to dry thoroughly and then it's time to start with the roof. For this I'm going to use a hemp color. Apply this all over the roof and then a highlight with random tan. Quick look at some of the details. The door metal details were bolt gun metal and the wood was flat earth. I use sepia and Agax Earthshade 
on the little windows, allow this to dry. Then with a little blob of UV resin. This is a trick I learned from Jeremy over at Black Magic Craft. An awesome easy way to make windows. First a little blob of UV resin. Then we spread it out with a toothpick. Plop on the UV light. And we have ourselves a cool little window. Look at the glass, really realistic. Great technique. Let's divert our attention back to the roof. Agax Earthshade to where the different sections of the thatching meet. And then a layer of transparent greenwash. We are going to introduce a bunch of greenery to the roof at a later stage. So this is the first thing that we need to do. The same Liquitex transparent green is then used to apply some moss to the stucco walls. And then a layer of pure transparent green to where the roof meets the edge of the stucco wall to emphasize a bit more of the mossy texture. Don't be afraid of hitting the wood as this only adds to the final result. A layer of stone grey for the low wall around the cottage and the chimney. Then I'm going to use three washes. First a umbo wash on about one third of the model. Agrax Earthshade is the second wash. Fill in a little bit more. And then finally a flash wash to introduce some reddish type colors. And with this color I fill in the last stones. Okay, I light four washes after a thorough drying of the previous ones. A good layer of black wash all over the stones. Then I did a highlight with the stone gray. However, I apparently didn't have footage. Easy enough. After drying of the dry brush, a good layer of transparent green into the recessed areas of the stones. Pass over these again with a bit of thin down PVA glue and then I apply some fine turf by Woodland Scenics. This is the wheat variation. Tap off the excess and allow to dry thoroughly. Then we divert our attention back to the roof. We're going to use the same fine turf by Woodland Scenics. First a layer of Woodland Scenics and I don't exaggerate with this first layer. I want to build it up so I can give it a bit of weight, a bit of mass. Tap off the excess again. Then for the second layer, don't forget to place something on your work table so you can catch all the excess powder and reuse it. I like it, however I think the color is a little bit too gaudy, a little bit too bright. So I go back to the transparent green and paint over the flocking and over the thatching just to blend everything a little bit better together as you can see here. Final layer on the roof is a bit of fine turf, but this one, but this time a little bit brighter. This is the grass variation, just sparingly here and there till you are happy with the results. For the base, I started with a layer of burnt umber, and then a mixture of burnt umber and old white to simulate where the most walking around would be. and on the higher areas. We're going to do some simple wet blending. So after applying the first layer, I go back to the burnt umber and I try to blend the colors on the base while wet to simulate some transition between the colors. If you are happy with the result, allow to dry thoroughly. And then we can apply a layer of Geek Gaming Base Readies, Scrubland in this case. Watered down PVA, there was still some green paint in it, no problem. To the appropriate places. And then simply sprinkle on the base ready all over the base. Tap off the excess, allow to dry thoroughly. And then we can go on with a second layer of flock. A couple layers of static grass applied with my trusty static grass applicator, the Bat Mother Flocker. 
first a layer of watered down PVA glue and then it's time to decorate the workshop with static grass and hopefully also get some of the base. I keep applying until I'm happy with the results all over the base, all around the building, tap off the excess. And it looks a little something like this. On the higher areas of the ground, I want the grass to be a little bit taller. So I paint in a bit of PVA glue and I reapply some of the static grass. This gives a nice fluffy texture that I like very much. However, I'm not too fond of the color. It's a little bit too light. It should be a bit more dark like the greens that I apply to the roof and the wall. So I'm going to rip out the airbrush back to the transparent green and lay down a layer of paint. Not too much. I don't want the same color as the roof. Just want to blend it up a little bit. And I want to keep the peaks of the grass the same color as they are. And this is the result. I'm liking it very much. Bit more looks APS base ready to the sides where the soil is a little bit drier. And then a little bit of scenic glue to keep everything in place. Once again, leave to dry thoroughly. And it's time for the final steps. Some flowers by Mini Nature attached with a little bit of super glue all over the appropriate places. I want to blend the flowers a little bit into the grass, so a little bit of watered down PVA glue and then flower petals, which is basically just ground up foam. I apply these in white. And in yellow, a couple of things before we go to the money shots. Some people might have noticed that indeed there is an interior. Next week, expect stuff like foodstuffs, furniture, all witchy themed little bits and bobs everywhere. Highly recommend it. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out. A huge thanks to my Patreons. It's all thanks to their support that these kinds of projects are possible. Links below to my social media. To the money shots.